Okay, now I'm going to show you something brilliant. I've deleted all the other stuff that was there, the folder track and all that, and I've set reset things. So we just got the EVP instrument track and that male creamy lead vocal. And I've drawn in some regions and I've given each a different colour. Okay, now, as we've already shown, the way that this new all-in-one interface works is you highlight a region, open your piano roll, the little colour line there gives you an indicator of which region you're editing, and you do your edits and things, whether it's um, in the piano roll, the hyper editor, uh, or if you're editing a piece of audio, the sample editor, or go in and tweak your mix with the mixer. Okay, that's one way, but there's an older way which is um, an old technique which is, goes back a long way in logic and that's something called screen sets and if you look at the top here this arrange area, our open default thing page is called screen set 1 there it is, screen set 1 you see which is assigned to arrange and by default the open arrange page which is your working area where you do everything is assigned to screen set 1 now you can have up to 99 screen sets in logic and they're accessible and selectable and creatable using the number keys that live across the top of the QWERTY board. That's the numbers above Q, W, E, R, T, Y, etc. Right? So pressing number one key loads my default arrange page, screen set one. But watch this. I'll press the number two key. Hello, hello. Screen set two is now active. And it defaults to give you the arrange page. So don't close that yet. I'm going to make screen set 2 my piano editor. So I go to window, choose piano roll. There you go, and that pops up. Now once the piano roll is open, or whatever editor you choose, you can then close the default arrange page. But don't do it before, otherwise the screen set just closes and that's that. You have to start again. Okay, so there is my piano edit. Hang on a minute, though. there's no transport bar. So what I do is go to window, transport. Now <coughs> I've done this once already so it snaps to the bottom but the first time you do it your transport bar will probably open sort of here somewhere like that and it won't be very big and what you do is you just simply hit that plus button there that little plus button which full screens it right across the bottom and locks it to the bottom like that and then all you do is you just make sure your piano edit is snapped up to the top left then drag the bottom right down and it will snap to the top of the transport bar snap it to the right screen side and there you go one enormous piano editor look at that and I can zoom in vertically and have nice big piano lanes and nice big piano keys yeah and this is just a godsend when you're standing further away from the computer and you're playing in MIDI data and stuff like that or you just want to work and really concentrate on editing in the piano roll perhaps you're doing something quite intense having this full screen big display is just so much nicer to work with it really is <coughs> and of course the beauty of the system being that you you only see the menu that's relevant to this editor which is the local menu bar that lives across the top and all your functions and commands are there as well as in your shortcut menu which is now assigned to control and left click because we've assigned the tool selector to the right click right okay there you go one enormous piano idea now unlike Cubase which also has something similar to screen sets logic doesn't need to save a screen set once you've laid the windows out because screen sets can be multiples of windows of course um, you don't need to then lock it and save it whatever however you leave a screen set logic remembers it so that's that I've done it and now if I press the one key I'm back on my arrange page so now I can highlight this yellow region press the number two key and I'm now editing the yellow region and there's the, the limey yellow colored line down the side to give me a visual cue that that's the one I'm editing and when I finish my edit I press the one key and I'm back on my arrange page and the beauty of that is, is you can use this massive full screen editor for doing really intense work but when you're just doing little tweaks, you can always open the piano roll at the bottom, make a tiny tweak and close it. It's up to you. OK, let's make another screen set. So now I'll press the 3 key. Again, don't close the arrange page. We're going to now make this the hyper editor. So I choose hyper editor. Now I close the default arrange page. 
Now create a transport bar and that will snap along the bottom because we've done that once already. Again make sure the hyper editor screen is snapped to the top left, drag the bottom right down and hey presto one enormous hyper editor which will default to show you this MIDI controls which are these kind of MIDI control lanes and at the moment if we go back to screen set one we've got this lime green yellow coloured uh, region selected so if I now press screen set three to go to the hyper editor these are MIDI control lanes by default and that's the velocity of those four notes okay but I can switch this to GM drum kit and I can also create my own custom drum kit um, uh, but most uh, sample uh, software sample sets that you load into a sampler like drum sets or software drum machines all default to GM protocol so it pretty much works for any software instrument out there that does drums and you're ready to go and the beauty of the hyper editor is it's kind of like um, Cubase's drum map every single lane of the drum map every single drum lane can have a custom title you can have mute groups like See that little vertical line there? These three hi-hats are all in a mute group, so only one of them can sound at any time. And every single row can have its own individual quantize. Fantastic, eh? Anyway, we'll come to that when we analyse the editor in depth. So number three is now my hyper editor, number two is my piano edit, and number one is my arrange page. And now let's make number four screen set. So I press button number four. I will now make this the mixer. So I go to Window mixer. I'll close that arrange window, add in a transport bar, make sure that window is snapped to the top left, drag it down. There we are, snap it to the top of the transport bar, maximize the width, which doesn't make a lot of difference does it? And there you go, one full size massive mixer. And of course when you've got lots of uh, channels it's, it's fantastic. So there is your mixer now assigned to screen set 5. Um, sorry, screen set 4. And screen set 5, for example, I can just press button 5 and I'm now created screen set 5 and I've got this default arrange page. I can make this my sample editor. Now, uh, if you don't have a piece of audio highlighted on the arrange page when you do this, it will, it will ask you this. It will go, there's no audio region or audio file selected, you want to open a new audio file, so you need to open one just to create that. So I'll just choose any old drum loop there, look. And now I can close my arrange, and now I can window create and transport bar down the bottom, and then drag this down and snap it to the top of the transport bar, and to the right side of the screen, and now I've got a massive audio editor which is remembered on screen set 5. And there, uh, I've created five screen sets, and you can create up to 99. To access like screen set 11, you double click number one. Uh, is it like that? Or is it control and, yeah, control and one, and you control and click one twice, and you get screen set 11. To delete a screen set, just go, just select it, and then do delete. Okay, number one, arrange, number two number three, number four, number five. And as I said, the beauty is you can go into these big full screen editors when you want to do some serious work, but you can always use these little lower editors for doing quick tweaks. And there you go. That is the screen sets.